Good Friday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window and looks were kind of deceiving today. We did see lots of beautiful blue sky and bright sunshine out there. It felt a lot warmer than it really was. Temperatures still 15 to 20 degrees below normal and it's going to stay this way folks for at least a few more days, probably into even next week. But let's take a look at our weekend and it's shaping up to be a cold one with highs only expected to be in the upper 20s here in the Wenatchee Valley with lows expected expected in the teens. We're talking lower teens here, single digits over in eastern Washington. In fact, Spokane this morning checked in at one degree below zero. We'll have more weather details on the way for you a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. East Wenatchee Mayor Steve Lacey will retire at the end of his term this year. Legislation transgendered students has passed a Senate vote and Governor Jay Inslee makes it official. Earlier today he formally announced his candidacy for President of the United States. But first we begin tonight. Two drivers were injured yesterday when their cars collided on an icy stretch of Highway 97 that was about five miles north of Arondo. State troopers say it happened when 17 year old William Schindler of Arondo lost control of his southbound vehicle. It crossed over into the north Bound lane where he was struck then by 43 year old Olivia Acevedo of Monitor. Troopers say Schindler was driving too fast for conditions. Both were treated at Central Washington Hospital. East Wenatchee Mayor Steve Lacey will retire at the end of his term this year. The mayor tells NCW Life News that his decision not to run for re election is no secret. I've made it pretty clear to everybody um, privately for the last few years that I plan on ending my uh, tenure as mayor at the end of this year. I do plan on staying through the end of my term and finishing strong, but I'm uh, prepared uh, to uh, move on to some other things after, after this year. Lacey was first elected mayor in 1998 when he succeeded Don Collins. He says he's leaving the city in good financial health and that he'll leave office with a sense of personal satisfaction. My intent all the time was simply to do a competent job as mayor. So if, if someone thinks after I'm done that I did, then I guess that'll be my legacy. East Wenatchee City Councilman Tim Dietering has announced in a Wenatchee World interview that he intends to file for the position. Candidate filing period is the second week in May. Well, legislation requiring local school districts to adopt new state rules to address bullying of transgendered students has passed a Senate vote. Substitute Senate Bill 5689 would order schools to designate a person for, or students to contact in a complaint involving gender harassment. It would also require the state school superintendent to develop new rules for schools to use in training those primary contacts. Supporters say transgendered students deserve more attention because they suffer the most from school bullying. That according to national st statistics. We already have policies about bullying, I agree, but this specifically does call out one that is exceptional and is not being addressed. And I think it is our responsibility when we care for the safety of our kids to make a point of bringing it to the school board's attention and saying that there are things you need to know about this population, you need to learn about this population, you need to understand about this population so that we don't have situations where children are driven to suicide or um, acts of, of uh, emotional distress. Senator Brad Hawkins, a former Eastmont school board member, rose in opposition to the bill, claiming it usurps local control. You know, none of us on this side of the aisle support bullying or intimidation or anything like that. But what we also can't support is forcing school districts to uh, adopt these sort of policies. I think the those people who are in the best interest to make decisions are those at the local level, and we want to respect our local school board's ability as an elected body to, to implement these sort of policies. So thank you, Madam Chair. We'd, uh, many of us will be voting now. Bill passed a Senate vote. It's now in the House and has been referred to the Education Committee prior to its first reading. 
Governor Jay Inslee makes it official. Earlier today, he formally announced his candidacy for President of the United States. Inslee is running on a mostly environmental platform, focusing on his long-standing concerns about climate change. He reiterated his position in a video released today by his campaign. Governor, what do you have to say about climate change? A lot. We have got to stop global warming. Everyone in this country knows climate is changing. Reduce carbon pollution. New energy future. Climate change. Climate change. We should be dealing with climate change. Climate change. Climate change. We need to defeat climate change. That's what I believe. We're the first generation to feel the sting of climate change, and we're the last that can do something about it. We went to the moon and created technologies that have changed the world. Our country's next mission must be to rise up to the most urgent challenge of our time, defeating climate change. This crisis isn't just a chart or graph anymore. The impacts are being felt everywhere. We have an opportunity to transform our economy, run on 100% clean energy that will bring millions of good paying jobs to every community across America, create a more just future for everyone. I'm Jay Inslee and I'm running for president because I'm the only candidate who will make defeating climate change our nation's number one priority. We can do this. Join our movement. This is our moment. This is, this is, is, this is our moment. This is our moment. This is our moment. Inslee becomes the 13th Democrat to enter the race, with more candidates expected to announce their intentions. He's the first Washingtonian to run for president since Henry Scoop Jackson ran in 1976. Coming up next, we should know by mid-March who Governor Jay Inslee will appoint to replace retiring Douglas County Superior Court Judge John Hotchkiss. The state Special Olympics Winter Games gets underway with opening ceremonies tonight. And Rayanna Rosenberg, the six-year-old girl who fell into an icy Rock Island pond on February 21st, experienced health complications today. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Hello, and what is up? Welcome to Career Shift Business Edition. I've got three choices. Certificate, Associates, and Bachelors. I'm going Associates. And I'm enrolled. Stay alert, this game was pretty fast. Whoa, <laughs> exams almost did me in. I'm back on track and picking up speed. And I'm in the home stretch. Degree complete, and I'm ready to go to work. Charter helped me make that career shift. Your turn. It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back. In another news, we should know by mid-March who Governor Jay Inslee will appoint to replace retiring Douglas County Superior Court Judge John Hotchkiss. That's the word from Inslee's aide, Tara Lee, who says his legal team is conducting interviews this week and then vetting applicants. She added that, quote, it will probably be at least another couple weeks before we have a final candidate, unquote. Governor Jay Inslee will appoint a successor who will serve out the remainder of Hotchkiss's term that expires in 2020. The Chelan Douglas County Bar Association will also provide the governor with its recommendations of potential qualified candidates. Hotchkiss will retire March 31st after serving 20 years on the Douglas County Superior Court bench.
More than 1,500 Special Olympics athletes will be competing this weekend in alpine, basketball, cheerleading, figure skating, Nordic, snowboarding, and speed skating. Athletes will represent Washington homes towns ranging from Walla Walla to Wenatchee at the 2019 Special Olympics Winter Games. Opening ceremonies will be held at the Town Toyota Center in Wenatchee beginning at 7 o'clock tonight and will feature Mayor Frank Coots from the city of Wenatchee and Mayor Steve Lacey from East Wenatchee as well as a law enforcement torch run. The general public is encouraged to attend the opening ceremonies and cheer on the athletes at the various venues around the valley as fans in the stands throughout the upcoming weekend. Well, Rayanna Rosenberg, the six-year-old girl who fell into an icy Rock Island pond on February 21st, experienced problems with her lungs today. Though she's been making substantial progress in other areas, Rayanna has uh, remained on a ventilator. Today, they weren't able to keep her oxy oxygenated enough, so they're putting her on an ECMO, which diverts blood to an artificial lung, where it's then oxygenated and put back into the body. That, according to Sean Ballard, to Ballard Ambulance. Rayana spent 20 minutes in the water before fire crews from Douglas County Fire District 1 were able to rescue her. Earlier this week, she was upgraded from critical to serious condition at Seattle's Children's Hospital. Meanwhile, a GoFundMe page has been set up to help the family of the girl with expenses. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. for you today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Thanks. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in our community. New beginnings feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Be a job creator. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again. Please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time, Mary Maids. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, our final segment from the upcoming NCW Magazine on the Haran House. Catch the full series starting Monday on the NCW Life channel or on demand on our website. For tonight, we visit with two locals who share their memories of the Haran House, including the great-granddaughter of Michael and Margaret Haran. Denise Brown Fritz. I'm the daughter of Patricia Herrera Wallen, who's passed away, and she was born and raised in that home. My grandmother was Helen, and married to John, and they. She was the last Haran Haran to live in the house. The McDougals did live there for a while while my Uncle Bob was in, it, my grandma had moved to town. It was just such a big house to rattle around in for one little lady and she was all of four and a half feet tall. Uh, and so she moved to town and they moved in. He was in the legislature at that time and that's when the McDougals lived there. It was heaven back in the day. We had the best Thanksgivings and family would come from all over the state. It was a traveling event because we all got together and it was all done right there in, in the dining room. It doesn't look like a dining room anymore. Sliding Boumdier down those stairs. Ah, uh, golly. 
Oh golly, sitting at the kitchen table having soft boiled eggs with my grandma and talking, 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 laughing, laughing, laughing. My favorite room was my mother's bedroom. Just because she talked about it really a lot and told me stories about growing up there, being in it. I have the furniture and she always liked to tell a story on herself. So I'll tell it again on herself that uh, she would, they'd swim down in the river and then come back up and hang their suits out on that railing of the of her little balcony. Well, <laughs> she had taken it off and stark naked and threw it over and lost her balance and tumbled over down to the ground. And you know that little house across the way, well there was a, a lady there that worked for the family and, and she, Mrs. Monroe, and she, Monroe and Scottish Monroe, she was Scotch. She spoke Scotch, <laughs> you know, the broke. Anyway, she came running, Patricia, Patricia, are you all right? Mom says, <laughs> embarrassed. That was my favorite room. It kills me that it, that it could even begin to be destroyed. It was one of the first fine homes built in this valley. And how anybody can think that there's any rational reason to knock it down is beyond me. And I pray somebody comes along with money. Boy, do I have some ideas. <laughs> It'd be the best bed and breakfast in this area, or it could be. Everything historical that, that remains should be preserved because life is changing too fast, the world is changing too fast, and modern is ugly. <laughs> the Haran House was also a restaurant starting in the 1980s, well cherished by locals as a special spot on the Columbia River. The restaurant closed following the death of John Haran, but its memory lives on in the minds and stomachs of many locals. Oh, it was, it was a beautiful setting. It was in wonderful shape then. And it was a restaurant at the time. And um, immaculate. It was, it was beautiful. I'm Sharon Beebe, and I was raised here in Wenatchee, uh, born and raised. My husband and I, Bob, were married at the Haran House on September 29th, 1984. I've always been fascinated by old houses. In fact, if you went into my kitchen, you'd see old Victorian houses everywhere. It was really nice grounds, and and uh, we had a great day, and the blue sky and everything. <laughs> it was just a unique house. It was just, it, it, it needs to be saved. <laughs> now for a check of that north central Washington weather and before we get to those details as we head into the upcoming weekend let's take a gorgeous look once again outside our weather window and this is looking from our Rondo Rock SkyFi tower camera looking back at the Wenatchee Valley you can see Turtle Rock right here and just some hazy misty clouds over us in the valley with some mid-level clouds above that but all in all it was great to see that sunshine today wasn't it it didn't allow us to warm up all that much but at least today we reached a high temperature of 30 degrees and it's been a while since we've even done that. But look at that. It's still 17 degrees below where we should be for this time of year. 13 degrees below where we should be for our overnight low at 18. 31 is normal. Record high a few years ago. It was a nice one in 2013 at 63 degrees. 14, our record low temperature back in 1993. Snowfall to date still at 22.1 inches. The sun rose this morning at 641 and will set today at 546. Now let's take a look at that surface loop and show you what we can expect over the next five or six days. Tonight, partly cloudy skies. We will see a light north 
northwest breeze or northeast breeze, I should say. That could make it a little bit chilly as far as wind chills go, but look at all those clear skies as most of the storminess has already moved into Montana and will move south into Wyoming. For Saturday, mostly cloudy skies, just a chance for maybe an isolated flurry or two. Most of those will stay north of the Wenatchee Valley, but boy, you can really see that trough of low pressure digging all the way down into north Texas, and that's bringing cold air down through Washington State. Sunday, mostly sunny. We're going to get another reinforcement of Arctic air late Sunday night and especially into Monday. Mostly sunny and cold on Monday. We're going to be lucky to even see highs in the mid-20s as we get into Monday with lows right around 10 degrees. By Tuesday, increasing clouds. An area of low pressure to our southwest will begin to move inland, and that will bring us just slightly warmer temperatures on Tuesday and even warmer temperatures beyond that as we move into Wednesday. Mostly cloudy skies then. You can see an area of snowy, snow uh, showers right in the central part of Washington and down in the Palouse. About a 30% chance for us. Really no accumulation is expected from that system. By Thursday, isolated flurries. Most of that will be to our south. And look at that. We will see warmer temperatures by the end of next week, at least into the upper 30s, flirting with about 40 degrees. Won't it feel nice? And now let's take a look at your quick lube and tune forecast. 19 the low tonight, 33 tomorrow, maybe an isolated flurry as we kick off our weekend. And then much cooler on Sunday and Monday, 26 Sunday with 11 the overnight low, 27 on Monday, and then the slow warm up. 31 as we make our way into Tuesday, 38 possibly by the end of late next week. Isolated flurries and mostly sunny for Thursday with a high of 31. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house featuring great family dining in downtown Chelan. We've got burgers, pub fare, and the best barbecue around. Try one of our award-winning sauces made fresh here in-house. So grab the whole gang and come on down. Stormy Mountain Brewing. Beer, barbecue, friends, and beer. Moving doesn't have to be back-breaking, stressful work. And I don't want you to make a move that way ever again. Traditionally, you would rent a truck. You would load up your stuff. You would rent a storage unit. You would transport it. And finally, you would unload your stuff yourself. You don't have to lift a finger. We bring the mobile storage unit to you. We drop it off. Then one of our trusted packers can load it for you. We come pick it up and store it securely for you. We bring it back to you. No hassle, no stress. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy Friday to you. I'm back here in the studio because I'm getting ready for the Special Olympics opening ceremonies tonight. I'll be the master of ceremonies for that. Meanwhile, back in Yakima, the Cashmere Bulldogs are taking on LaSalle as we speak in the Sun Dome in today's State 1A semifinal. This after Cashmere 62-41 over Annie Wright in yesterday's quarterfinal. I asked Haley Van Lith after yesterday's win what it's like to sit around and wait for 27 hours before your team plays a semifinal. This is just time for us to get ready and uh, know what's coming. And it's going to be a big game, so we better be focused. And we're just going to enjoy this day and this experience, but we're not satisfied. So, Coach Brent Darnell has his team in the semis for the third straight year. He said the time between yesterday's quarterfinal and today's semifinal would be spent preparing. We had a great battle with LaSalle earlier this year, lost by two. Riley Johnson had a three in the corner, good luck, almost went in. If we come and show up and play like we did today, we'll be a tough team to beat. Uh, so we, we know we got our work cut out, but you know, we're excited. You know, we're, we're, we're enjoying this, so it's, it's, we're going to be ready to play. We'll be ready to play. Senior guard Ellie Albert says it's helpful to have uh, Coach Darnell and his staff there to keep the team in check and always work on the little things. He never wants us to, if there's like foul, he doesn't want us to get too low. And if you get an and one, he wants you to be excited in the moment, but just get back and continue to just have a straight, calm face and just continue to not show emotion, but show emotion yeah. to every day in practice. Everybody's, they get on you about the little things and just continue to, you have to do those things right, perfect before you, like certain drills, you have to, every single time you have to do it perfect or else you get, 
can't get out of the drill and he just everybody's there they're re really supportive and want the best for you but want to push you to your limits so be sure and watch our Facebook page for updates on today's semifinal at Cashmere win would mean a possible rematch of last year's state championship against Linden Christian tomorrow at three a loss would put Cashmere in the third or fifth place game tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock as we continue looking at the Les Schwab prep scoreboard let's uh, take a look at the state 2B boys tournament in Spokane Brewster beat Willapa Valley yesterday 57 49 to advance to today's semifinal where they're playing Kittitas Lake Roosevelt came up short in its quarterfinal game yesterday falling to Life Christian Academy 64 44 but the Raiders stayed alive today with a 56 48 win over Tudor Lake they'll play Toledo tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning for fourth or sixth place the Brewster girls ran into a buzzsaw yesterday on the floor of Veterans Memorial Arena the uh, Tri-Cities prep advanced to today's semifinal by downing the Bears 75 43 at last check Brewster trailing in its game against St. George's today in the consolation bracket. Elmira Cooley Heartland is flexing its collective muscle in Spokane during the 2B tournament. The Warrior Boys are back in the semifinals after yesterday's 54 37 win over Nacelle. ACH plays Yakima Tribal tonight at 9 at a shot for tomorrow's state championship. The Elmira Cooley Heartland girls also in the semifinals today after downing Mount Vernon Christian 49 22 yesterday. ACH has a date with Pomeroy today at 5 34 a shot at the gold ball. Well, the Wenatchee Wild begin defense of their Fred Page Cup tomorrow at the Town Toyota Center with game one of its first round BCHL playoff series against the West Kelowna Warriors. Warriors are the number six seed coming in into the playoffs after finishing the season 28-28, 1-1 one with 58 points. Wenatchee is number three seed, finishing with a record of 32-22 and four with 70 points. The two teams split their regular season meetings three games apiece. Well, the Mariners improved their Cactus League record to five and two today with an eight three win over Milwaukee in Peoria. Mitch Hanniger hit a solo home run in the first while Domingo Santana hit a solo shot in the second to spark the offense. Jay Bruce also went three for three at the plate with two ribbies. Seattle plays at Kansas City's spring training facility tomorrow at 12.05. Finally, on the Les Schwab College men's basketball scoreboard last night, number one Gonzaga had no trouble with Pacific, winning 86-66. The Washington Huskies stubbed their toe big time at Cal, falling to the two, uh, six and 22 Bears. They were 0-15 in the Pac-12 coming in, 76-73 the final, and Stanford had no trouble with Washington State winning 98-50. That's the sports news. I'll be back in Yakima tomorrow to follow whatever happens with Kashmir after today. Again, be sure and follow our Facebook for updates right there. That's sports. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a great weekend. Grant, back to you. Thanks, Eric. Finally tonight, time for NCW Life's Megan McPherson to fill us in on what's going on around the Valley this weekend. Here's a look at what's on tap this weekend around the Wenatchee Valley. The 2019 Special Olympics Winter State Games will be held this Friday through Sunday. Come cheer on the thousands of athletes competing in eight different sports. From Leavenworth to East and West Wenatchee to Mission Ridge, Special Olympics Washington brings one of the biggest events to the Wenatchee area. Join the Wenatchee Racket and Athletic Club for the Spring Fling Racquetball Tournament that has been an ongoing annual tradition for 25 years. This is a Washington Racquetball Association and USA Racquetball sanctioned event. The locations are at the Rack and Wenatchee Valley College this Friday through Sunday. The cost is $50 for the first event and $25 for the second. Friday is the 11th annual Mobile Meals of Wenatchee Spring Variety Show Benefit Concert. This is a show with numerous talents performing. The show provides funds for the Mobile Meals nonprofit organization. The lobby opens at 6 p.m. with music by Mary Groff Sanders, and the actual show starts at 7 p.m. Tickets are only $12 and $8 for kids 12 and under. Matt Cadman will be the MC again this year, and there will be some returning acts and some new acts. Nick's Bricks is this Saturday from 10 to 3 at Pibus Public Market. There's no cost to participate and donations will be accepted. Legos will be provided and Nick's Bricks will include these activities. Lego make and take, Lego jewelry making, Lego spaceship making, Lego displays, Lego robotics demonstrations, door prizes, music and snacks. And finally, the Upper Valley Empty Bowls Artist Showcase and Gala Reception is this Sunday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. This is an opportunity to view the 2019 Bowls and Platters 
Bowlers, created by 22 local artists and potters for the Empty Bowls Online Artist Bowls Auction. Join fellow community members and friends for an evening of art, wine, appetizers, and music at the Icicle Ridge Winery in Pashaston. Meet the featured artists and potters and raise funds for the community-covered food bank with a $20 suggested donation at the door. For more information on this weekend's events and others, visit the community calendar at ncwlife.com. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend.